Her name was Louise. Once when she was 16, a boy kissed her at a barbecue. He was drunk and he jammed his tongue into her mouth and ran his hands up and down her hips. Her father kissed her often. He was thin and kind and you could see the pity in his eyes when he looked at her, the lights of love and pity. Her father was a lawyer and he made a lot of money. He came home looking pale and happy. Martinis put color back into his face and at dinner he talked to his wife and two children. How's Marjorie and Joanne? They're fine. When Louise went to college, she met Carrie. Carrie was a great friend to Louise. She took a trip to Boston. Then one Sunday night, when Carrie had just returned home and was unpacking her overnight bag, she looked at Louise and said, Good. Louise, I was thinking. Hmm. When, am I, when we graduate, yeah, what's to become of you? I want you to be loved like I love you. So if I help you, like really help you, will you go on a diet? I mean, I guess. But can I finish this bag of gummy bears first? Yeah. Then yeah! <laughs> Louise had entered a period in her life she would remember always, the way some people remember having endured poverty. Her diet did not begin the next day. Carrie told her to eat Monday as though it was the last day of her life. So for the first time since grammar school, Louise went to the school cafeteria and ate everything she wanted. At breakfast and lunch and dinner, she glanced around the table to see if the other girls noticed the food on her tray. They did not. She felt there was a lesson in this, but it lay beyond her grasp. In the fall, a young lawyer joined her father's firm. He came one night to dinner and they started seeing each other. He was the first man outside her family to kiss her since the barbecue when she was 16. In the spring, they married. I want to marry you because you're the first person I look at when I wake up in the morning and the only one I want to kiss goodnight because the first time I saw these hands, I couldn't imagine being able to hold them. But mainly when you leave someone or love someone as much as I love you, getting married is the only thing left to do. So will you marry me? Yes! <laughs> In the fifth year of their marriage, they went to Europe, and according to their plan, she conceived a child in Paris. How are you doing, Louise? Not good. 
Well, it looks like you're about to be at 10 centimeters. Oh, no, you are at 10 centimeters. Are you ready to try? She gave birth to a son, brought him home, and nursed both him and her appetites. Look at you. Lasagna, for God's sake. When are you going to start? It's not simply that you haven't lost any weight. You're gained. I can see it. I can feel it when you get in bed. Pretty soon you'll be weighing more than I do. Then I'm going to be sleeping on a trampoline. You never touch me anymore. I don't want to touch you. Why should I? Have you looked at yourself? You're cruel. I never knew how cruel you were. <laughs> I will help you. Please, Louise, listen to me. I will help you. I'll eat what you eat. When she puts the boy to bed, she will get a candy bar from her room. She will eat it here, in front of Richard. This room will be hers soon. She considers the possibilities. All these rooms and the lawn where she can do whatever she wishes. She knows he will leave soon. It has been in his eye all summer. She stands, using one hand to pull herself out of the chair. She carries the boy to his crib. With a surge of vindication and relief, she holds him. Then she kisses his forehead and places him into the crib. She goes to the bedroom and in the dark takes a bar of candy from her drawer. Slowly, she descends the stairs. She knows that Richard is waiting, but she feels his departure so happily that, when she enters the living room, unwrapping the candy, she is surprised to see him standing there. <laughs>